Welcome to Little Rock. In this video we're going to have a look at um, the city of Little Rock, Arkansas, the surrounding area, and we're also going to be zoning in on the um, Arkansas State Capitol building. Um, first let's have a look at the region. So here we're looking at Little Rock, Arkansas, and I am going to be showing you a lot of what I discovered in this general area here. Ozark, um, St. Francis National Forest, the Ouachita National Forest. Apologies if I'm not saying that right. Um, and we'll look at this area before we zero in a little closer on the city of Little Rock and the state capitol building. And a quick look at the Wikipedia timeline of Little Rock, Arkansas. Um, so we, you see we have it going down through the years. We have it becoming the capital somewhere in the early 20s. Uh, Little Rock briefly named Arkopolis. Um, having a bit of an Egyptian feel there, which I thought was interesting. And then they sort of run you through how the uh, town developed. 1860, we have a population of just about 4,000. 1870, 12,000. Let's take a look at those demographics. And here we have a bit of a timeline. Um, we're going to be zoning in on the state capitol building, which was being uh, quote unquote built. Um, I may propose that it's being altered um, in this time period here. So 1900, 1910, 1915, all in this time period here. Now let's have a look at the surrounding area. So as I was traveling through this area, I noticed a lot of dams, uh, some interesting stonework, like a stone wall running through the forest. Uh, this would be the Hot Springs National Park. Buildings jumped out at me in that area. I have a couple of pictures. This one having a real old world feel, making me feel almost like I'm in Central South America, Spain, something like that. these buildings all in Hot Springs National Park. And now we get into more of the Ozark area. Wachita National Forest. a lot of this, this, uh, I don't know, terracing of the water, walls being built up. I don't know the explanation, historical explanation for a lot of that. This they're calling the Arkansas Sphinx in the Ozark Park there. Uh, I thought that was an interesting little tie-in with the uh, Arkanopolis um, temporary title for the city of Little Rock. This would be a, a very interesting area to explore, live in the area. I would uh, definitely get out and check out the anomalies of the uh, what of what nature provides. Seems to be so much to see. And then there's some stonework here again. Remember I mentioned the damming and terracing. You see a lot of it. what your eyes are showing you here, but uh, I know what I'm seeing. Definitely interesting landscape. I'm guessing that's 
uh, man-made. It becomes difficult to tell a lot of these. Again, we talked about the blurred lines. Interesting structure here. Or, uh, natural structure, is it? Are we looking at some form of devastation? Or is it all easily explained? This one, this would be the Rattlesnake Ridge, they call it. There it is, it's a better one. This one looking like the mud flows, sort of falling away from itself. It's the old mill nearby. This one very interesting. This one really jumped out at me. The bridge here. I, there's no doubt in my mind that, that that's melted and fused together. There's a better look at it from above. Very interesting structure. There's the mill. Sort of all a part of the waterworks here. So, we've taken a look at the surrounding area and it's time for us to stop in Little Rock, Arkansas. We begin with the State Capitol building as it uh, appears to us today. This is an older photo, obviously. And I've just got a few postcards and pictures of some of the other structures that existed early on in. Little Rock. I don't know how many of these still stand. This is the interior of the Albert Pike Hotel. I'll come up a little later. And then this cathedral will be seen with a short uh, spire peaked roof and along. Like, anyone know what a consistory is? I didn't look it up, I'm sure I could. Um, but it's Albert Pike Consistory, this building here. Old school building, Centennial School building. Pike Hotel, there's exterior. I like this old street scene, they're saying it's from 1910. Um, got obviously the, uh, the trolleys, the rail cars in full effect. You have the brick streets, um, heavily worn brick streets, giving it a sense of age. Uh, and you have the Antiquitech, so all, ticking all the boxes of what we typically see uh, for this time period and a bit anomalous from what we think of historically. And a couple domed Baptist churches here. Way overdone, I would say. Oh, library. Now we have the Masonic Temple. Gotta have one of those, especially with Albert Pike in the area. And we have the Presbyterian Church in the background. Another uh, interior shot of the Albert Pike Hotel. And there's the church being worked on up here. Okay, so there's a look at Arkansas, now let's zone in on Little Rock, Arkansas, let's zone in on the Capitol building. And here's a look at the Capitol building as it stands today. Uh, looking pretty magnificent. Um, also a bit of a plainness to it. Not too much decoration. But magnificent nonetheless. And there's a view from above. You're seeing it slightly skewed. Um, let's get into a little bit of the backstory on this building. We'll start with a Wikipedia write-up on the Arkansas State Capitol. 
Uh, we look at the history of it. 1899, the St. Louis architect George Mann um, visited blah 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 blah. You can you can read it more in depth. But basically, what happens is they say the the current Capitol building was falling apart, and this architect um, inspired them to build a new Capitol building. Um, he was selected as the architect. Um, and then we have George W. Donaghy. Donaghy, there he is, was in a, opposition to him being the architect, but ended up also being the one who head up the build, which I thought was interesting. This so construction took 16 years, they say here, 1899 to 1915. We're jumping over to the encyclopedia of Arkansas.net. Um, gets a little bit more in detail by 1899. Um, they basically saying they had enough money now to build the uh, the new building. They did, decided to build it on the site of an old prison. And let's see here, on the penitentiary site, um, they created an act and made 200 convicts available to work on the capital project as a means of saving money. Which I thought was interesting. Uh, the previously mentioned Donaghy um, became the capital commissioner on this project and he led, he oversaw the 200 convicts uh, on this build. So we're talking about unskilled labor uh, on this project here. I would also like to point out a timeline here we have May of 1899, just George Mann being hired as the architect, and we have work on the building beginning July 1899. So um, we're to believe that the architecture, the architect work, had been completed by this point of time, um, and they were good to go for the build. They also mentioned the foundation was, was complete by by the following year, and the cornerstone laid. Of course, there's no visuals of any of that, but uh, there are some visuals which we'll be getting into. This same site gets into the pace of the project and how it basically came to a standstill. Um, shoddy workmanship, sub substandard materials um, were being employed apparently. Um, by 1907, nothing was being done on it and it became a joke. They called it the habitat of owls and bats. Oh really, owls and bats, nice. Um, we move on a little further to when Donahue becomes uh, governor of the state and he switches out architects for this Cass Gilbert character. Uh, let's see here. And they, they mentioned some of the works that Cass Bil Gilbert was responsible for. You can look him up. I won't get into that in this video. But again, it's the same story you see if you check on Wikipedia. You have the architect and you have a long list of these old world buildings that they seem to be responsible for. They also do mention in this area that the work was not just of a, a building, but it was a restoring because it had sat dormant for a while. So this restoration, this um, explaining of basically removing what was there and then putting in something new um, comes up in this uh, historical narrative as well on this website. And they get into some of the details of that here. Inadequate iron and steel work was replaced, fireproofing was improved, new reinforced concrete floors poured, uh, original metal dome design was scrapped in favor of a stone dome. Um, plans for exterior, exterior statuary were also scrapped. Okay, so this is all sort of worked into the narrative and this is important because I'm going to show you why. They also say they moved in by 1911 into this building. So I also found a website um, that has a series of photos from the construction of this building. This, uh, these apparently popped up in 2010, were put online. So we'll have a look at some of the photos right now. And this one is, is telling us that we have convicts here. A lot of rubble action going on out front here. Spectre roof shot. 
looking like, yep. And this looking very typical of the construction photos we see where the bottom of the building has been looking like it's been there a very long time and then we have a dome that's um, right in this case we've only got scaffold here really around it a couple uh, crappy cranes and a white out sky and of course the uh, the convicts the skilled labor convicts or the unskilled labor maybe they were all just very very skilled builders and just all happened to be or there were many of them who knows they should have thrown that in to the historical narrative uh, make it more believable for me here you have all that scaffold again just the dome's not there this is looking complete so very strange order of construction um, if when you start to pick apart these old construction photos I mean, it gives me uh, a lot of questions uh, keep this in mind as well here we have the statue with the ring there um, I believe that will be sitting on the top of the dome eventually you'll see uh, I don't know if there's a stripping going on here it's, it seems I don't know, very fuzzy hazy anyway convicts are doing construction and let's have a look at the inside of this building some of the finished details that are often overlooked and I think carelessly as far as timelines go for these buildings. This is the, the symmetrical looking up to the underside of the dome. But this gives you a sense of the perfection and symmetry that these convicts were able to achieve with the guidance of the architect and the governor, I guess. Oh, governor gets a fancy doorway. Just a sense of the grandeur. You get some get a set, good sense here when you look at the side. You got all railing, stone. Yeah. And we get, of course, a bunch of young people being sold the narrative. So now they all know the story, and that's how we know the story. It's all just a series of stories, really. Depends who's dictating. Who's writing the books and who's dictating the narrative. So just some shots of the interior. No biggie. Any old convict could build this. Conference room governor's conference room. Again, we get the fireplace action going on here. Oh, there's a log in there just in case. In case it get cold. Entrance. Okay. So, shots of the interior. And I'm going to end this video by bringing you a bit of a question mark that I found. Make of it what you will. I'm not sure what to make of it yet. So here we have the Capitol building, the postcard form. And here we have it again. There's that statue I told you to remember. And here we have it again. What do you notice? I'll go back and forward. This is not a great one. We'll see more. Here's the statues. I get a mention of being scrapped. And the dome. It also gets a mention of being scrapped. So the, the historical narrative is telling us this never came to be. These statues and this dome. Um, when the architect changed hands. So... I've got a series of uh, postcards I'll run through. Um, a whole bunch of different shades for these uh, postcards. And this is depicting an early era. You can see the horse and buggy. I, I guess one of the criticisms I have is if you're just going to assume that this is a drawing, uh, who pencils in all the people? It feels more like a photograph that's been colorized. I think a lot of these postcards are. The 
there, you get a sort of an idea of that statue. And you get many different versions of this postcard in particular, especially from the first decade of the 20th century. So the question is, and what I'm proposing, is that this building once looked like this. And what we have been looking at is a deconstruction and a reconstruction of aspects of this building. And this gets into the whole inheritors narrative if you're if you're into that. Uh, I think it's an interesting um, proposition. There's the statue right there. And so what I'm thinking is they took that off when they deconstructed this, brought it down, and perched it out front. And then you're also seeing a bunch of detail here. It almost looks like the slate was wiped clean uh, on the existing building, and all this detail was taken off to take away um, some of the features that indicate the old world. And there's a good one there as well. And I have a whole series, I found a whole series of these postmarked, like I said, from um, the first decade. Um, uh, some of them are saying this building looks like it's not complete yet, it looks like it's under construction. Um, and then I found one from 1906 that uh, is kind of blown away by the splendor of it. So um, it's interesting to, to read those um, um, little blurbs on the postcards and see what people are observing at the time. Anyway, I wanted to bring you this little uh, tidbit of information I came across, and you make of, make of it what you will. Um, are we dealing with a uh, an inherited society? Um, we brought up the name of Albert Pike, and when we look up the original architect George Mann, some of the other buildings he worked on, he worked on that Albert Pike Hotel I showed a few pictures of. Uh, what else is he? Fort Smith Masonic Temple. So we have that underlying theme, and we know there's a deception going on. Um, I think that's pretty obvious. How deep the deception goes, I don't know. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video, and maybe it uh, inspired you to think a little bit more about your region and the history of where you live. And, and about this region as well. Thanks for joining me.